This is the video lecture for the Guidelines to Solving Projectile Motion Problems lesson plan. It was created by Brett Blevins and edited and narrated by Sean Krupa. This video and accompanying lesson plan are part of Ohio University's Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom Project, funded by the National Science Foundation. In this video lecture, we'll go over some guidelines, tips, and strategies to solving projectile motion problems. Let's begin by looking at velocity. No matter which projectile motion problem you're solving, there will always be a velocity term to deal with. Velocity consists of a horizontal and vertical component. All this means is what percentage of the velocity lies along the x-axis, the horizontal component, and what percentage lies along the y-axis, the y component. In picture one, you see an object traveling completely vertically. This means that there's no x component and the velocity and the y component are simply the same thing. The opposite case can be shown in picture three. The object is traveling completely along the x-axis. There's no y component, so therefore all of the velocity is the x component. But most problems will be like picture two. There will be an x component and a y component, and we'll need to use trigonometry to deal with them. We need to use the familiar phrase SOKATOA to remember the trigonometry to solve for the velocity components. SO, which is the sine function, or opposite over hypotenuse, gives us our y component. KA, or adjacent over hypotenuse, gives us our x component. This is the cosine function. And TOA, or opposite over adjacent, is the tangent which can be used to solve for the hypotenuse. If you need to pause this video and review these relationships, do so now. You can resume the video when you're ready to continue. Now let's talk about some strategies for solving any type of projectile motion problem. This should begin with drawing a picture. It doesn't have to be well drawn, but it needs to include the necessary components to solve the problem. We'll talk about this more in a little bit. Next, you should write down the parameters that are given to you. These are your knowns. Finally, you should write down what you're asked to find. These are your unknowns. From there, you have a good chance about figuring out what direction you need to go in order to solve the problem. There are three main points that can be used to solve a projectile motion problem. The first is the point where the projectile is fired from. Here, initial y and initial x positions are zero. The second is the point where the projectile is at its maximum height. This is often useful because the y component of the velocity will be zero here. Sometimes this can give you an added known to help solve the problem. And finally, the last point is where the projectile stops or where your x and y positions are final. It's often useful to separate one large problem into smaller problems. Instead of analyzing from points one to three, you could analyze from one to two or two to three. In fact, oftentimes this is how you have to solve the problem because you don't know enough information to solve from one to three directly. Be careful though, when you separate it into smaller problems, your initial velocities and positions will be different. For example, if you're analyzing from points one to two, your initial velocity would be at one and your final velocity would be at two. However, if you were looking at points two to three, your initial velocity now becomes your velocity at point two and your final velocity is your velocity at point three. To test our understanding of these strategies, let's do a guided example. A football is kicked with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal. Determine the time of flight, the horizontal displacement, and the peak height of the football. As we said before, we start by drawing a picture. Shown below is a perfectly adequate example of a picture that could be used to solve this problem. Again, it doesn't have to be well drawn, it just needs to include all the necessary information. In this case, the initial velocity, the launch angle, and the other two points along the path which we're trying to figure out. Now we identify our knowns and unknowns. Let's start with the x direction. In the x direction, we set the initial position equal to zero. 
The final x position is what we're hoping to solve for. Because there's no acceleration in the x direction, the initial and final x velocity component is the same. And recall from our trigonometry relations that this is given to us by the cosine of the launch angle. Finally, the time it takes to reach the, from the initial position to the final position is also asked of us, and so therefore we don't know it. Because every equation in the x direction has either x final or t, it appears we're stuck. So let's try the y direction. However, the y direction is going to be a little bit trickier. We need to define whether or not we're going to set up a table for the entire path or half the path. Let's set up the table for the entire path first. In this case, the initial and final position of the football is zero. It leaves the ground at zero and it lands at zero. The initial y component of the velocity is given to us by the sine, again from our trigonometry relations. The final velocity of this will be the negative of the initial velocity component. This can be reached from symmetry arguments. If you don't understand this, pause the video and work it out until you believe this is true. Next, we know that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, and finally the time for the whole trip is again what we're being asked to find. I would argue that solving for the whole trip in the y direction isn't useful. Is there another way we could approach the y direction that would give us more help? If you answered to break the problem in half, you're correct. We'll know just as much in the y direction, which will help us solve, and we can use the symmetry properties of projectile motion to answer two parts of the question. So, rewriting the table, we have that our initial y position is zero, the final position is going to be the maximum height, something we're asked to find in the problem, we know the initial velocity in the y component, and because we're choosing to solve for half the problem, we set the final y velocity equal to zero. Again, we know gravity, and in this case, the time will be the time it takes to reach the highest position. To solve for the maximum height, we choose the equation without time, since we don't know it. In this case, it was final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2 times gravity times the difference between the maximum height and the initial height. If we are rearranged to solve for the maximum height, and remember that the final velocity and initial positions are both equal to zero, we get an answer of 15.9 meters. If you need to pause this video to work through this, do so now. You can resume when you're ready to continue. Next, we identify that the problem is symmetric. We just solved for the maximum height, but by symmetry, this means exactly half the trip that the football takes. Therefore, the time from y initial to y max is half the total time. Since we already have all the variables in the y direction, except for time, we can pick any equation we want in the y direction to solve for time. This will be time for half the journey. The simplest equation to choose is that the final y velocity is equal to the initial y velocity plus gravity multiplied by time. We rearrange for time and get an answer of 1.8 seconds. But remember, we said that this was half the total time, so we multiply by 2 and get a total time of 3.6 seconds. If you don't understand this step, pause the video and work through it yourself. You can resume when you're ready to continue. At this point, we know everything except the total distance traveled in the x direction, but we have all the variables except for this. Therefore, we can pick any equation in the x direction that includes the final x position and solve for it. The most simple equation to choose would be that x final minus x initial is equal to the initial x velocity multiplied by the total time. Remember that x initial is zero, so we didn't show it in the equation below. Multiplying our answer from the previous slide, we get a total distance traveled in the x direction of 63.6 meters. Again, if you wish to pause this video and work through this step, do so now. You can resume the video when you're ready to continue. We just solved the entire problem. However, we did it in the exact opposite order for which it was asked. It's important to remember that just because the question asks you 
for certain answers in an order doesn't mean you have to solve the problem in that order. Here are some other tips if you get stuck. The more you know, the more you can find out. It's always to your advantage to start by finding variables, even if you're not sure you'll need those. The more variables you know, the more variables you can solve for. Also, there's often more than one way to solve a problem. Use this to your advantage. Finally, the variable t, or time, is the same in both dimensions. You can exploit this to your advantage. Here are some take-home points. Every projectile motion problem has a velocity. It's important to remember the relations between velocity and the x and y components of velocity. Start every problem by drawing a picture. Then write down all your known variables and identify your unknown variables. Finally, separate the problem into smaller problems and solve it piecewise. This concludes the video lecture for the Solving Projectile Motion Problems lesson plan. Thanks for your attention.